wonderful students. Uh, let's start the session for today. As promised, well, I didn't promise, but I, as I hoped, uh, we will have some lab activity today with circuits, as you can see from the outline. And uh, anybody have a guess where that photo is from? The railroad tracks and stuff. Nebraska? No. Very far away from Nebraska. That's New Jersey. That's right. Is, is that what you were thinking? Yeah. Yeah, that's the. Uh, if you look down at the bottom, you'll see the photographer. That's a photograph of some of the rail lines, the commuter rail lines running into New Jersey. Uh, raise your hand if you've ever seen that movie or that show on uh, television, The Sopranos, on like HBO. Wow. Nobody. My goodness. It's no longer. It's no longer. It's not on. It's on HBO. Yeah, it's over now. They haven't been. I thought it used to be. Anyway, uh, the reason I like this photo is because um, it reminds me of the opening scene in The Sopranos where he's driving down the highway through New Jersey. And you see big trucks like that running down the highway. I didn't, it's not the railroad tracks. I love railroads, but it's the trucks in the background. That is New Jersey. You know, trucks everywhere, on the highways everywhere you go, uh, just like in The Sopranos. So if you've ever seen that, if you ever do see it in the future, uh, that's why this picture's in there. All right. I'll get your clickers ready. Turn them on. We'll get a Go Nitro. And uh, we're going to do an electric field workout. And hopefully... These electric field workouts are starting to get boring. Raise your raise your hand if you think they're boring. See, nobody's going to admit it, but I it's all right. I sh I'll, I'll take that back. I know a lot of you think it's boring, but that's actually good because it if it becomes boring, then that means you know it cold, and that's what I want. I want to teach a boring class so well that you become such experts this kind of problem will put you to sleep all right here we go what's the direction of the electric field point at the electric field at point s now here's a proton different position so type in a letter or two letters oh hold on let me start it Okay, you should be able to type in one or two letters. Or actually, A, 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 B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Just type one of those. Okay, 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Can you guys make a count? Student count, please. Um, yeah, uh, answer is uh, southwest, which most of you got. Go ahead and make your sketch if you need it in your notes. Now, our next task, we've done it before. Let's try it again. See if you guys can crush this. Also, short answer. So type in uh, something, point something, 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 as before.
ಉಳಿದ It's interesting you're using a calculator. I just mentally calculate. The other thing you could do is count the empty seats and then subtract it from 99. It's a little easier task. Yeah, all right. We'll count it again in a minute. Um, yeah. Uh, can you count these flukes over these uh, meters over here? Make sure we got enough of those. This is taking too much time. I'm going to give you 90 seconds. Get rid of that paper. Let's declutter this area up here a little bit. 90 seconds starting right now. Thirty-three. All right, so the thirty-four. So there's supposed to be thirty-four of these, one for the instructor. So that means there's three of these that are missing. They've grown legs. Uh, you know what? Can you look around? Can you look around and see if there's – here comes some more students. Eighty-two? Yeah, okay. Eleven tables of nine. I know it's it's bad. We've had people drop out. I know one guy's has stopped coming. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, let's check. Uh, students, let's take a look at this uh, results chart. All right, we got some people kind of typing in stuff here. Here's negative. If I ask you for, there shouldn't be any negatives here. If I ask you for a magnitude, that means it's a positive number. It's simply the size. It's like the speed on a speedometer. Velocity is a vector and has a direction and can be handled with plus and minuses if you're going left and right or up and down. But speed is a scalar. And the same thing here. Anytime I say a magnitude, I'm talking a scalar. All right. And the meaning of magnitude is simply the size. So you never have, uh, you never say, well, I'm going to go to the store and buy sneakers of size minus 13. All right? You just, it's always, a, so think of it that way, as a pair of sneakers. All right, so there's negatives here we sh should be seeing. Uh, let's take a look at some of these. Eight point, there's 8.47s. This is the correct answer. Right here, eight zero point eight four eight. Ooh, ooh, here's a little round off action. Here's a typo. That looks like a typo. 
4.8. 8. 8.48. Yeah, round off sides. If you know, you got here's some minus. These equal signs, there shouldn't be any equals in there either. See, now look at this. Perfectly nice magnitude, but they tried to put a minus sign, and they got an equal sign, and that's no good, Ski. All right? So if I were grading this on a test, you know what? I still have to put up – I have all your clicker points figured out for the test. And I keep telling myself to publish them in, in web courses. But if I see this on the test, I would say, all right, they, they got the right – but they, they have a minus sign, so that's minus 1. So they get 2 instead of 3 points. Now, I don't know about this guy. I'm not going to ask for whoever typed that in. Well, that's the letter O. And you know what? God love you. I don't blame you. This, these clickers are sometimes tough to use. Anyway, that one I would, that one I would give – I would have mercy on that student. All right. So – All right, so here's your answer, eight zero point eight four eight. Okay, next question. Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, do you have a question? Yeah. It's uh, positive eight. So it came up to something. It came up to eight point four eight times ten to the seventh. So that's the same as 0 0.848 times 10 to the 8. If you if you got a minus – Melanie, if, if you uh, – Matt, move your big head. Okay. I'm trying to talk to Melanie, and you're right in the way. You're big coconut. Huh? You forgot the – Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whew. Don't do that on the exam. What did I say on the exam? All right, here's X component. Let's get this one done. Uh oh, doggone it. All right, let's calculate. X component. Now, X components do have directions. So now you should be doing a little trig. <laughs> I'm going to use that chair when I when we do this stuff because I'm going to be at the document can. One minute. Uh, Andrew and Kendra, um, what you're going to do is we're going to have people coming up from the table. Uh, Kendra, you can hand out the uh, combo boxes. And Andrew, you can hand out the flute, the uh, meters, okay, one per group of three. And then, huh? And I'm going to use this one up here. 
And so we're going to have to, what I want you to do now is find two tables with six or fewer. All right. And, but anyways, then don't do that quite yet. But um, when we finish with all the measurements and stuff with these, uh, we're going to collect, put them, I'm going to put it back to show the students how to put it all back together. And then, um, and then we're going to collect them and then we'll have a little bit more lecture after that and then dismiss. Okay. So that's going to take an enormous amount of time, but we got time. Resistance and resistivity. Actually, we're going to be talking about that. Mm -hmm. 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Isabella, did you get it? Hurry up. I see you furiously clicking in numbers over there. Now, what was our count? Okay. Now we got 82 answers on that one. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, this is the correct answer. Uh, and actually, <laughs> Let me go down and find zero point, negative zero, this one. Okay, good. 44% of you got this one right. And I can also consider that one correct. See, I, see how on these I can, I can select more than one? The multiple choice questions, I can't. So that's why I have to be careful with multiple choice. Come on, baby. All right. 8.23, uh, that's, that's right, that's to the east, positive 0 0.823, this is the right size for the component, but that would be an eastward one, not a westward one, uh, and here's some, some people trying and flailing with the equal signs, and I have to try to be, oh my goodness, look at this, Actually, this this is good. You guys are getting it because so let's look at the let's look at the sum. Seventeen plus four that's twenty one. Oh, what do you guys think? Yeah. Underscore. Yeah. All right. Okay. So one percent seventeen is eighteen plus four is twenty two. And then plus 44 is 66, plus 10 is 70. All right, you guys. And hey, you guys, this negative 0 0.822, I might, uh, negative 0 0.822, I might give uh, partial credit to on a test, something like that. So, all right, so you guys are doing better on this. That's very nice. It's very lovely. Yeah, so the answer is negative 0 0.823. Um, for those of you that want to double check your triangle, here's the trig that you need to work out for this one. Slightly different. Last time we had a 3, 4, 5. This one's just a 1, 4 and square root of 17. Uh, the tangent of uh, theta is uh, 1 over 4, so the measure of theta is, is 11 degrees. And uh, try to, you know, when you're doing these, I, when I'm doing work, a written problem, well, that's what this, this triangle is about, the, like the first thing that I draw. You know, if, if I have the diagram of the field point and stuff, then on my scratch paper, I start working out the trig and stuff. All right. Now, I'm going to give you uh, alphanumeric input for the next question. And it is a public opinion survey, so I'm going to give everybody correct, right? 
And it, it may seem like a weird question, but it's not a Chuck Norris question. It's a, it's a, uh, so don't, so don't type in Chuck Norris, but, uh, or any Chuck Norris concepts, but do type in the answer, what you think the answer is to this question. What is a fluke? Okay, so you should have letters. Actually, I should I have a follow up question to this. What is a fluke? What the hell? Is, oh, that's a thermometer. You know what I do? I always do. I I always do the four by you know the triangle I had. I did. I I do. I don't put any of my scientific notation. I just go four squared plus one squared, seventeen. Yeah. And then and then I go seventeen times ten to the minus eighteen meters squared. Yeah, I forget about the nanometers when I'm doing the squares. Yeah, but you're squaring. A nanometer quantity squared is 10 to the minus 18 square meters. Yeah, but don't, what, what I'm saying is not only that, but you don't have to, you don't have to square this. All you have to do is to put in the, the, come on over here. All you have to do is put in the square of the hypotenuse. So this is this is good up here. Yeah. You know, so you don't really need R. You need R squared. That's just 17. Mm -hmm. So it's K and E up on top because it's a proton. And then 17. And now it's actually 17 times 10. Now this is what I put in every time. Minus 18 square meters. Okay. This is a square nanometer. You, yeah, you just put it mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's all you got to do. You don't need to square. See what you're doing? You're square rooting it, Sandra, and then you're squaring it again. Yeah. That's, that's not necessary. Here you go. Is this yours? That's your thing. Mm -hmm. So this will be 10 to the minus 9 up here. Thirty? Where are you getting thirty? I didn't say thirty. No, I was just saying. So that's what I'm dividing, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the number. So that I'll get up. Okay. Okay. Good. Oh, thank you. All right. Did you type in your answer? I didn't get it. I sent it after you closed it. No. Well, no. This one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, 10 seconds to vote. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right. The reason that I'm giving every... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm give, going to give everybody a free point on this one and mark everything correct because I'm guessing that nobody knows what a fluke is in the context of this class. Now, these are all – this is in the cafeteria, a one-off. Yeah, okay. A coincidence, accident. Let's look at this. Accidentally.
A chance, a chance event, and a boop, an oopsie. Uh oh! Now wait a minute. Now, now what's this brand? Who brand? What's the? Chance event, circuit, crazy luck, device. Oh, oh, that's get, that's getting warm. Error, fake, fish. That's true, fluke. Yeah, mm -hmm. flat. Good luck, XD. Oh, good luck. Oh, got luck. IDK, luck, luck. Many circuits. Measure measures voltage. Oh my goodness. I don't know about some of you guys. You must be reading my mind. The answer is on Instagram. This is my Instagram account. And if you and go ahead and write it down. No, 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 no. It's not you gotta be kidding me. No, I'm going to start using it for class. I'm going to be taking photos of your guy, with your permission, of your guy's work as I stroll around. And, and hopefully it will be helpful for your classmates. So look at – if you look at UCF Vision, and who's got it? Anybody get anybody it? It is? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. See, I'm kind of a rookie with Instagram. Not only that, not only a rookie, a newbie. I started using it a few years ago, then I stopped. All right. Well, here's what's on. Uh, a fluke is uh, what we call a multimeter, so a meter that, and we're going to use it like this one. This one up here, everybody's going to have one of these today. And it measures voltage and current and resistance, depending on how you set it up. And the reason I use it as a noun is, instead, and this is a brand, a flu, the Fluke Company. They make the best. And one of my buddies out west, out in uh, Oregon, works. he's an electrical engineer, and he's just, you know, he talks about flukes. You know, hand me my fluke. You know, everybody's, well, who here knows what a nerd pack is? Have you ever heard of a nerd pack? Slackers. You know, the. have you ever heard of a, a, a pocket protector with a bunch of colored pens in it? You know, and the guys that you work, work you know, they like, they like work for NASA and stuff or the like they wear the white lab coats and stuff. And, it, you know, that's a nerd pack. Uh, but for an electrical engineer, they have a nerd pack, but they also have a fluke buckled to their hip, just like, you know, a lot of us have a, a phone, a holster to our hip, like what I'm wearing right now. So that, so if you, act, if you ask an electrical engineer, depending where they live, uh, can I borrow your fluke? They'll say, and they'll whip this out. Or they'll whip out something else that, you know, it's not a genuine fluke, but, it, you know, it's a multimeter which is what we're doing. People are burning up my phone line here. Oh, no, it's not Instagram. I'll have to set it to – so what do you have to do? You have to follow you, and you have to accept our follows. Oh, my God, I have to accept all of you guys? One by one? Yeah, see, I don't want to see any of your guys' phone numbers or anything like that. So. Yeah, that's right. All right. Wait a minute. You're going to see my phone number? No. You see your phone number. I can show you Okay. All right. All right. So now, students, take a look at this. This is the Model 87. This is Model 87V. And, you know, there's electrical engineers in this world that, Boy, I wish I had my 87V right now. Uh, it's a true RMS multimeter. Now, what RMS means 
is root mean square. And that's a stats term. So if, it, raise your hand if you've had statistics class. Do you remember root mean square? Did they teach a little bit about that? Yeah. It's a stats thing. I never talk in terms. But engineers, RMS, yeah, that's all over the place. Now here's the, so this is a fluke multimeter. That's what fluke means in this class. Now I'm going to give everybody free points on the, that last question. Um, and let's just uh, type in the different ways to use a fluke. Okay, we're, and this is what we're going to be doing. So take some notes. Uh, and we're going to measure some circuit properties today, the voltage, on a very simple circuit, just like this one uh, here, a light bulb wired into a battery. Right, And we have these little electrical kits up here, these little combo boxes up here, uh, and every table is going to have three of them. Oh, can you see if there's any table that only needs two? Just to see if we can. All right, so, okay. Um, so let's, how do you figure out voltage? You use the voltage probes. Now, these things over here are the probes, okay? Uh, they have like a little sharp end to it. And you touch that to a part of the wire that you want. So, um, and go ahead and make a note of this. You use the common and then the voltage V uh, connection. You can't really see it in this diagram, but up here you can see that my, my actually, can you, uh, Switch this over to the ditto cam here. Okay, if you look at this, here's the, the, the one that you guys are going to use. Now down here, you can see that my red and my black leads are connected to something called COM and V, voltage. Also notice it has an omega there for resistance and also an HZ for hertz. This thing could measure uh, frequency, I guess. Also, temperature, apparently, is one of the features of this one. Or uh, the fluke. Uh, I don't think this one measures temperature. Uh, anyways, so, okay, you switch back. So let's take a look at how to do that, okay? So you have the leads uh, attached to COM and V. And then you touch the probes to different points in the circuit, okay? So, for instance... Uh, the positive side of the battery and the positive end of a device. Okay, so here's the positive end of the light bulb. All right, that's the one that's connected to the positive end of the battery. So you put the common down here on the high end of the battery. All right, and I'll show you how to do this on the document cam in a few minutes. But it's going to look kind of like that. And then you do that and you get a voltage, you know, whatever the voltage uh, drop is from the high side of the battery down to the uh, high side of the uh, bulb. All right. And, uh, you know, so that's pretty easy. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So make sure you have a sketch of this. And we're going to be doing this measurement and then we're going to be measuring the bulb. And then we're going to be measuring from the bulb back to the uh, low end of the battery. All right, that's that's down here, this small plate in the schematic. All right, now, uh, it's possible to measure current with the fluke, all right? And what you do is you connect to a different pair of channels, you use the common, and then you use the amp or the milliamp scale. Now, always start on the amp scale uh, because you don't want to fry the fluke, all right? If you have 20, uh, if you have 20 amps flowing and you put it on the milliamp scale, you're going to burn out the circuit, all right? Too much current. So I start on the big uh, amperage scale. And the way that you do that is you put this, you put the fluke in series with, you know, wherever you want to measure the amperage. Now what that means is you connect the, you remove the wire from the uh, between the, the high end of the battery and the bulb, and in its place, you put the two leads uh, from the fluke, and the fluke will read out the current that's going between the high end of the battery and the bulb. Nice. All right, so that's always good. Now, we're not going to do that today. Um, 
uh, we're going to do it on uh, Wednesday. All right. So you basically put the fluke in as part. See, if you look at this carefully, go ahead and look at this carefully. Uh, can I do what? Um, part C. Yeah, part C was part of the circuit. Oh, you didn't get all of those? Sheesh, I've got to go all the way through this again. All right, so here's the voltage. And here's the two. And here's the current. And if you look at the if you look at the configuration and the diagram for the fluke, uh, the fluke is parallel. to the bulb. It, the, the fluke has got its own, um, I take that back, it's not parallel to the bulb, it's parallel to the wire. It's got its own path from the battery to the end of the wire, which is the, the, the high end of the bulb. All right, so you're measuring, for this one, you're measuring the, the voltage drop in the wire. All right, and it's, it's parallel. Now, the reason I bring that up is because for current, you want the fluke to be in series. You want it to be part of the circuit instead of an independent loop of the circuit like this. All right, and we'll, we'll do the, we'll do the uh, current measurements on Wednesday. We're going to be doing a lot of circuitry stuff, uh, hopefully with these uh, circuitry combo boxes this week. All right, so uh, what we're going to do right now is uh, some basic circuit measurements. And I want three people from each table, except this table. I want two people to come up and get a box. Uh, one and this table over here, two people. Uh, and this table over here, uh, two people. And everybody else send three people for your group of three, one for each group of three. And come up here and get a combo box and a flute. Did I say that? No, 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 We'll hand them out to you. Put that back. Put that back there, Junior. Okay, Andrew, hand out the flukes. Kendra, you hand out the boxes. All right, just form a line. Come on up. All right, now I'm going to pause the YouTube. Okay, so here's your first question. What voltage drop do you measure for, for your battery? So you've measured end-to-end. -end. So everybody in your group type in the same number. And I just want to see what, what people are getting. And every... Everybody's going to get correct on this. I want uh, something point something something. You can get something point something something on this meter. Aha, look at this. That's, the, that's right. They, they connected the wrong direction. That's all right. It's not the wrong direction. It's... This guy's this guy's bad. It's a low battery. Yeah, it's not too bad. No. Okay, uh, ten seconds to get your number in. 10, 9, 8, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, good. Um, I think everybody's answered. Let's take a look at the data. All right, we got um, everybody's going to everybody's going to get uh, points for this. Um, so everything's going to be green on this. And by the way, students, I want to make an important point. When you're doing this or, or any kind of lab work, don't ever say, oh, that's that measurement's wrong. Your measurement is your measurement. It's not possible to be wrong. It might be off compared to something else, but your number is the number that you get. Because in physics and in science in general, we let the numbers do the talking. Galileo said, measure everything. And if it's not measurable, make it measurable. All right, and that's what we're doing here. Now, that's why everybody's gonna get dineros on this. So let's look at some of these. See if I can get this bigger. Okay, so up here, 1.53. Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of, this is the only one that's maybe a little shaky, but um, did, if, did you have, that That might mean just a, a stinky battery. All right, so I'm gonna let that go. I'm not gonna criticize that. Whoever had that. See, and everybody's in the same area. 1.52. Oh, by the way, uh, these negatives up here, what that means is that you had the leads the opposite way around. So the size of your battery is one point. You, you would report a, a positive voltage. You know, you don't say, well, how big is your battery? Negative 1.53 volts. No, you wouldn't say that. You'd say 1.53. So, but these are okay. That just simply means that you have to reverse the leads, the red and the black. Let's keep going down here. 1.57, 1.58. Here's the 5.8. I don't know. Maybe somebody is. And here's somebody with the equal sign. All right. So we had two students with five, one with 5.3, one with 5.8. Um, and so are those legit? Whoever got those? I mean, I, who who got those? Because they're not they're not illegitimate. Who got the 5.8? Who got the 5.3? I accidentally put it, didn't put it the one before the point. So that oh, so that's a typo. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, who else had the, was that 1.53? Yeah. Okay. Who had the 0. 0.58, 5.8? The decimal. the decimal in the wrong spot. So you had 0. 0.58? Are you sure? All right. Because uh, we're going to want double check it when we go to the next set of measurements. All right. But anyways, these are good. And notice what I said to Rashid Haroon over here. Double check the next time you go through it, because that's what you got to do. I mean, you don't just measure once. You measure multiple times, take an average, see what the average is, you know, the plus or minus, the standard deviation of your measurements, all that kind of stat stuff. So taking another measurement. Rashid Arun is, is kosher, is righteous. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and write this down in your notes. We're going to wire in this simple diagram. Now I'm going to swap over to the document cam in just a second, and I'll go through it with you. All right. That's a magnet, I think. A refrigerator magnet. You know what it is. It's, it's one of those things they put in. Uh, you know what it is? It's for these magnetic uh, doors, the door latches. Oh, yeah. All right, so jot this down. In other words, a battery and a bulb. That's it. And we're just going to do it real simple. All right. Now, uh, let's go to the document cam. And I'll keep the podcast going. YouTube, I guess. Let's see if I can do this without messing up too much. 
All right, now I'm going to take my fluke over to the side for just a minute. We're going to be measuring with it. And I'm going to actually go ahead and turn it off. It has an auto off switch, but go ahead and turn it off because we're it's going to take a few minutes to do this properly. Okay, so now I bring in my green battery. Okay, and on this battery, or excuse me, my green light bulb stand, these two screws coming up, these two machine screws coming up um, to left and right of the bulb in this view, that's um, those are your two contacts. All right, and one of them is going to connect to part of the bulb. Let me see if I can unscrew this. The way a bulb works, that that little silver tip at the very bottom is connected to one end of the filament inside the bulb. And then the metal collar with the screw um, grooves for the screw, uh, that's the other end of the filament. Right now, if you look at the bottom of this, you'll see that one, this end, for, on mine anyways, goes up to the screws. And this end over here attaches to the filament. This one's obviously going up the up that little um, pipe there, up this green pipe higher up into the, uh, what you call it? Actually, you might be able to see it here. No, you can't really make it out. Um, anyway, so here's your bulb. Now take two of the alligator clip leads. Color doesn't matter. It doesn't matter today. Now we're just going to use one of the batteries. All right. So make sure you use the battery that you measured. Okay. And connect the tab on the negative end to one of the posts over here. Okay. And then grab yourself another one another lead and go over to this. See, I've got my tab over here on the other end. This is the, for me, this is the high end of the battery. By the way, you guys, the, the, the part of the battery that has the, the little um, bump on the top, the little cylinder on the top, that's the positive end or, or what I call the high end of the battery. All right. So connect the high end of the battery to the other post. And what you should notice is a little bit, uh-oh, a little bit of light. I'm going to put my alligator. Yay. Okay, so you get nice. All right, go around and check everybody's lights. Now we're going to send Andrew and Kendra to check your lights. Make sure they're going. It, it's not very it's not very bright. This is a two and a half volt bulb. So it's not going to be full uh, full brightness with this battery, but it'll it'll still have a little bit of Now you can see mine is, is lit up. Come on, baby. Okay, so you can see mine is lit up. All right, now do this very carefully. If it stops, just tr try to jiggle. And that's another thing in electronics. You got to, especially with these kind of connections, you sometimes have to jiggle them a little bit to make them cooperate. You know, this was working really good before class. That's <coughs> typical. Yeah. All right, now mine's going. 
All right, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to make three different voltage measurements. So tune your fluke back on. All right, now I'm not going to put it in the picture, but you will see the probes. All right. Now I want you to go to the negative end of the battery. Okay. Let's get these wires. You know, the thing about wires is they automatically, they have like a mind of their own in terms of getting tangled up, no matter how hard you try. Okay, now make sure your battery is, is running. Now what I want you to do is touch down here with one of your probes the plate at the bottom of the battery. Don't hit the tab. Touch the plate here, all right? Touch the bottom, the negative end of the battery itself, the silver part. And then simultaneously touch the alligator clip, the metal part of the alligator clip, and see what kind of a – now, if you're getting a negative number, switch it around. That's what I got here. So I'm going to switch it around. Okay, the metal plate and – all right, and I'm getting about a point two something. Go ahead and write down what you have. Point something something. Uh, go around and check to see, make sure people are getting measurements. Okay, Gabby needs help over there. Raise your hand if you need help with your measurements. See, here's what I do. I touch the metal, the metal part of the battery right there. And then the other end of the wire. Now, don't. Does it just switch it? If you get a negative, just switch the, just, you know. We're not, we're not focusing on the color of the wires yet. That's for electrical engineers. Bunch of nerd balls over there. Okay, now, you guys, notice that on my apparatus, the negative side of the battery is connected with the red, my red wire, and that red wire connects over here to this part of the, of the light bulb uh, platform. Okay, that's what you want to measure. From the bottom end of the battery here, to the other end of the red or my red and then get a voltage. Okay, and you got to give it a little bit of contact. And your your connection has to be lighting up the bulb which Come on, baby. This is burning my grits. I'm going to try a different lead. This one sucks. All right, so write down, write down your voltage. Now, does everybody, can you, I'm going to ask for a show of hands. Does everybody, raise your hand if you don't have that voltage. Everybody good? All right, let's go to the next one. All right, now your bulb has to be lit. All right. Now what we're going to do now is, across the, what we call across, oh, wait a minute. Um, just, just write down your numbers and let's, let's do the next one. This one we're going to measure across the, what we call across the bulb. So that means from post to post, 
all right but it's got a my thing is just getting jiggled it's not stable all right so measure from post to post and write that number down so that's going to be something point something something all right so write that down now that's what we call measuring across the bulb the voltage drop from the low this time from high end to the low end of the bulb okay just circulate Make sure to circulate, Kendra. What are you getting? Where's your fluke? Oh, I see. There it is. Okay, raise your hand if you still don't have this uh, battery or this uh, post to post. Is it any Rachel or uh, Kendra? Does anybody have their hand raised? Raise your hand if you don't have the the battery volt or the uh, light bulb voltage. All right, let's go to let's go to the third voltage drop. Okay, now for me that's the yellow wire here back over to the high end of the battery over here. Let me get that back in the picture. All right, so here's the high end of the battery. So I'm going to try it. Now, that's the part of the battery with the little nub on it. All right, so I'm going to go from the post here to the nub end of the battery. And I'm going to write that number down. Well, this is heinous. Very good. Hey, don't connect the capacitor. You know, you can electrocute yourself with that thing if you don't do it right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Marty Jr. Don't don't leave that leave that one in there for for Wednesday. We'll we'll do that one on Wednesday. Yeah, Heidi, think of that as a taser. You know, don't tase me, bro. Okay, does everybody have that last measurement? All right, turn your fluke off. Disconnect your, uh, your two leads. And uh, let's put it, I'll show you how to put this thing away. Okay. Now, let's put our equipment away and then we'll analyze it. Now, here's your combo box, all right, and in the bottom, okay, put that, that blue capacitor down on the bottom. Then put your batteries in the very bottom in one corner, okay? 
Then put one of the light bulbs next to the battery, like that, on the bottom. Put your little switcheroo. Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot the magnet. Oh, we'll do that on Wednesday. Uh, put your little switch job here, right in here, between the tape and the and the battery. All right, now, on top of the battery, put both of the light bulbs, the other two light bulb platforms, okay? Now, get your leads. Make sure they're not tangled. All right, so just kind of line them up nice and easy and get them all organized and mesmerized and homogenized and everything. All right, so get your get your leads and looking like this. All right, get them looking like this, and then just kind of coil them a little bit, like this. Okay, coil them like this, like about like that, and put that in over here. Uh, put your magnet in, and then on top of all that stuff, if you have this plastic bag, put that. Now put the top back on and bring it and your fluke back up to the front. Okay, you guys ready to hit? Yeah, you can move that over the side. to the laptop. Okay, let's continue with our uh, our discussion. Uh, I'm going to ask you um, a verbal question. It's not on the screen. Uh, wait a minute. No, we're going to do our measurements. Let's do our measurements first. All right, here's our first one. What voltage drop did you measure? Okay, let me get my cursor over here. From the negative end, and you know what? I'm going to make this numeric. Hit your refresh key. This is going to be numeric. And, hey, you guys, just give me the positive, just give me the absolute value of whatever you measure. And this, again, is a measurement, so everybody's going to get free dineros on this. Everybody's answer is correct. Edward, Eduardo, did you get it? How do you feel? 
Good. Pretty easy. Twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Um. On the next question, I w some of these I don't like. Uh, on the next question, I want you to uh, not type in negatives. Just give me the absolute value. All right. Now, next question. Um, let's see. What voltage drop did you measure across the bulb? Okay, so this is the second measurement. Twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Look at these numbers. All right, students, let's take a look at some of these. No, let's let's do the, the third question. Let's do the third voltage drop. Uh, so this one's from the high side of the bulb to the positive end of the battery. This is the second, the third one we, we did. Twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come on, eighty four, one person. Get your number in. All right. Now, here's the, let's look at the answers for number seven, which is the previous question. This one is the voltage across the bulb. Now, let's look at the magnitudes here. All right. Now, you know, these are not all going to be the same, so don't worry about that. But they're all in about the same ballpark, except for maybe this one. So this might be that. That um, is this you guys over there, Rashid Haroon? Point five point uh, point five nine. All right, that's not uh, Rachel. That's not you, is it? 
25 nine. All right. So that might be a weak battery, but everything else is near one volt plus or minus about 0 0.1, 0.2, 1.12999. I would mark that off on a test. Here's, this one is, this one I would say, let's try it again. Let's do it. Let's measure again. Whoever that one was, 0 0.16. Now, um, I'm going to ask, look at all your figures. Okay. Look at all your figures. And this is the, the next question. This is question number nine for today. Um, and this one's going to be, hit the refresh key. This is multiple choice. Hit refresh and then answer this one. Add up the three voltage drops we just measured and then compare that to your battery measurement. So take a minute to add those up. And remove the minus signs. Then that's not, then they don't match. If it's, if it's close, but it's not on, it's your B. Option B. Thirty seconds. Then that's not they don't add up. So that's B. I want exact amente. Which that's a little Spanish lingo for on the dot. Direct translation. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Now this one, ooh, ooh, I should have made this. I should have made this. Uh, alphanumeric uh, so let's do this again let's do an alpha let's do this question again alphanumeric because I want everybody everybody that answers so just type in the same answer a or B but type it in as a letter hit the refresh key type it in as a letter and that way I'll be able to give everybody points because you know if they if they add up that's good if they don't add up that's good it's your measurements we're checking okay and we're not even close to saying something definitive. So we just got to look at our numbers and let the numbers do the talking. So let's do this again. Good. 20 seconds. Either A or B and then hit the send key. See, look at that. Five, four, three, two, one. Get your answer in. Come on. It's either A or B. All right. Now, let's take a look at this. Look at that. Now, I'm going to mark both of these right, okay? But look, most people said no. And you know what? I bet that 20% up there said, yeah, they're almost right. Now, can you switch me over to the document cam, please? Oh. 
switch back to Okay, switch over to Doc then. Okay, now here's my data from before cl before class. All right, I could I measured my battery 1.662 volts. Um, then from the negative end to the bulb, that was my red wire, 0 0.308. So I wrote it down as a 0 0.31. Across the bulb, I had 0 0.90. So that's that's consistent with what you guys had. A lot of you guys had, most of you had. Uh, and then bulb to the end was a 0 0.26 back to the positive end. Now, here's my sum. And 1.47 is my sum compared to 1.662. All right. If you want to jot down mine, you can, you know, as another example in your notes, that's perfectly fine. Can you switch me over to document camera? Now, that's a problem. Because. Let's think about this for a second. You go from the negative end of the battery out to the bulb, then across the bulb and then from the high end of the battery back to the positive end of the, or for the high end of the bulb, back to the positive end of the battery. That's it. Where else does it have to drop voltage? So what? Now the fluke is designed to be very, very sensitive and not require a whole lot of, and besides the fluke is parallel. Okay, when you connect the fluke, you're going to affect the current a little bit, but not the voltage, if you connect it the way that we were doing. So students, we got a problem. Houston, we've had a problem here. The voltages don't add up. For me, and I knew what I was doing. For, for a lot of you rookies, newbies, it didn't add up either. As 20% of you maybe got a lucky shot, but I, I would question that. I'd make you do it another three or four times and then see what the average is. Because this, this equipment is kind of shaky. But we got a problem. Now, we're going to talk about this on Wednesday. Um, let me uh, do one more multiple choice verbal question okay so hit your refresh key and it's not going to be on the screen i'm just going to ask for an a or a b okay verbal question your feet the question is what are your feelings about this lab experiment that we did. Very simple. A, I feel decent and confident. B, I feel shaky. All right now, I just want to know either way. This one I'm not going to score. This is just a, so A means, yeah, I felt pretty decent about what we were doing. Or B, I feel a little shaky. And that's all right. Feeling a little shaky is fine. Because we're just starting out. Okay, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, we got it. Let's take a look at this one. Hey, look at that. Pretty good. There's a lot of students. All right, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to see that. It's lovely. Now, we've already put the kits back into the box and we've returned them. So your homework now, I'm giving you a detective case, just like Sherlock Holmes. I want you to hunt down the reason by reading in the textbook 
Why those three voltage drops do not quite add up to the battery's voltage? Why is that? There is a reason. All right, you can read about it in the book. You're dismissed. I'll see you on Wednesday.